Hi everybody, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife and today we've come to Mousehold Heath, just outside of Norwich. Now, we're in search of wildlife, surprisingly, but in particular we're going to be taking a closer look at some of the invertebrates that call Mousehold Heath home. Because there's such a diverse habitat here, there's many, many species. And because it's so busy with dog walkers and people and children running around, it's going to be quite difficult to film any birds or mammals. However, the invertebrates, as long as you look closely enough, they're all around us. So, let's go and see what species we can find. The history of Mousehold Heath is so diverse that I could never manage to fit it all into a short introduction. Its uses in the past include a camp for prisoners of war, a Victorian shooting range, and a gravel and clay extraction site for local construction. These days it is mainly used as a place for walking and relaxing outside. So with it being mid-August, the blackberries have come into bloom on Mousehold and that means there's plenty of food for the invertebrates. So it's going to be a good place to check and see if we can't find some species. I didn't have to look far before I found this flesh fly. They are named as such because they lay their eggs on rotting flesh or dung and this is what their maggots feed on as they grow. The adult flies regurgitate on blackberries as they feed and this unsurprisingly turns them bad. Mmm, delicious. On a thistle that was growing almost amongst the brambles, I saw this ladybird. I thought it was probably one of the invasive harlequin ladybirds that are quite common in the UK, but no, this is actually a native seven spot. They are a predatory member of the beetle family that are one of the gardener's best friends. They feed on a lot of aphids and other garden pests. This one is a complete daredevil and walks almost straight through this spider's web. The spider has definitely sensed the vibrations, but has maybe decided that it's best not to come into conflict with the ladybird. They have powerful jaws and would probably put up more of a struggle than they are worth. It seems that I was wrong when I said that I would struggle to film any birds at Mousehold. This wood pigeon waddled out in front of me and started displaying a behaviour that is almost unique to pigeons and doves. They are one of the only types of bird that can drink whilst holding their heads downwards. See here how it is taking multiple gulps without lifting its head. A minute or two later, this magpie landed further down the pathway. I panicked at first, but my sorrow was replaced by joy when a second bird appeared from the tall grass. Here you can see that magpies drink the same way that most other birds do, taking a beak full of water and then lifting their heads to swallow it. I started to head further into the heath, away from the main routes used by people and passed through a dense area of bracken. I then came to a more open area with large spiky gorse bushes. I scoured the ground in between the gorse looking for invertebrates and soon spotted this common field grasshopper. There are three species of grasshopper that are regularly found in the UK. The field grasshopper, the meadow grasshopper and the mottled grasshopper. This one could be identified as a common field grasshopper because it has a reddy orange tip to its abdomen. This species is active from June to late autumn. During this time they mate and lay their eggs beneath the soil. These eggs develop over the winter and emerge as smaller versions of their parents the following year. As I was about to leave the grasshopper to its business, I saw these ants going back and forth in a line from their nest.
There are 50 different types of ant that are found in the UK and many of them are black like these. My ant knowledge is limited to the point that I cannot tell you which of those species these are. There are two ponds that I know of here at Mousehold Heath. There's this one here which has crystal clear water but it's in the shade so it's difficult to film in and then there's another one which is where the dog walkers all go and it's all really muddy. However I've already been to the muddy one and I managed to get this footage of some invertebrates above the surface. Here above the muddy and often disturbed water there are a small group of common blue damselflies. Much like the banded demoiselles that I filmed in my Wildlife of the River Wensum video, these are males and are waiting here for any females or prey to pass by. They are agile airborne predators that grasp other flying insects with their long front legs and then use their strong mandibles to consume them. The damselflies are not the only airborne predator. I also managed to briefly see this mating pair of broad bodied chasers. Note how the male has grasped the female's neck with appendages at the end of his tail. Unfortunately a dog ran into the pool at this point and the pair of dragonflies left before I could get any more footage. Now the reason I've come to this second pond with its crystal clear water is because over there on the bank I've got my waterproof camera. Um, so I'm going to stick it in and see if we can't happen to catch a few creatures on film. I know earlier in the year there were some newts here, um, but I think I may be a little bit late in the year for them to be in the water still. However, let's see if we get anything on film. Although the water looked clear from above, this was not the case. These hundreds of orange dots are actually tiny little animals known as Daphnia. If you look closely here, you can just make out a newt larva moving from right to left, but this was unfortunately the only larger creature I filmed beneath the surface. Large parts of Mousehold Heath have slowly grown into mixed deciduous woodland. So on my way back to the car, I took a look to see if I could catch some larger creatures on film. This grey squirrel was not keen to be on camera, but I managed to get a few clips of him before he moved out of sight. Grey squirrels are a contentious species that were introduced by people and have been blamed for the demise of the native red squirrel. They have better memories than the reds and also carry a virus known as squirrel pox. The grey squirrels are immune to it, but it is fatal to the reds. On a nearby tree, I noticed this strange looking cluster of fungi. As I have said previously, I really don't know very much about them and despite a long time scrolling through Google, I can't identify this species. I'm pretty sure that it's a bracket fungus, and if you're an expert and know what it is, then please feel free to let me know in the comments. Well then guys, unfortunately that's all we've got time for today. I didn't manage to catch as many species on camera as I wanted to and there's so much more of the heath left to explore. So I guess I'm just going to have to return and do part two of this video. If you did enjoy this video though and you learned a little about and if you learned a little bit about some of the species featured then please leave a comment, leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you can. It really helps and it really motivates me to go out and make more British wildlife videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.